Mike Wheeler, Dustin Henderson, Lucas Sinclair, and Will Byers are all playing Dungeons and Dragons in Mike's basement. They're all fighting the Demogorgon. Will has to make the decision between a protective spell or an offensive fireball. He chooses fireball, but rolls the dice off the table, while the others look for the dice. Karen, Mike's mother, and Ted, his father, tell them it's time to pack it up and for his friends to go home as it's a school night. Will finds the dice and it was a 7, which was a miss. Lucas tells him to lie to Mike about it as Dustin goes to give Nancy, Mike's sister, leftover pizza, to which she completely ignores him. Besides Mike, they all agree Nancy's changed after beginning to date Steve Harrington. When Dustin and Lucas leave, Will tells Mike alone that he truthfully missed and that the Demogorgon got Will. He leaves as the lights flicker behind him. They all split up as they ride home. But as Will rides past the lab, his light flickers and turns itself off. Will looks back up to the road as he sees a tall shadowy figure turn to him. Will crashes his bike in the woods on the side of the road. And as he hears the monster growl from the street, he runs away through the woods all the way home. Will locks the door behind him and yells around the house wondering where Joyce and Jonathan are. He looks outside his windows only to see the figure followed him all the way home. He goes to ring the police, but the phone line is jammed and staticy. He only hears the slight growl of the monster. He looks at the door and sees the figure appear as it growls, opening the door on its own. Will drops the phone and runs outside to his shed where he knows a gun is. He scrambles to put bullets inside of the gun and after loading it, he aims at the door. The monster growls as it appears behind him. Will turns around and is frozen in fear when he sees the monster as the light brightens. The Demogorgon takes Will into the upside down. The next morning Joyce and Jonathan realize Will didn't come home last night. She calls Karen to see if he stayed the night but she denies this. She goes to the police station to report her son as missing. Hopper tells her not to worry as 99% of the time a missing child is with a parent or relative. Hopper tells her to go and contact Lonnie, and Joyce asks that he just finds Will. Meanwhile within Hawkins' lab, they shut off the entire east wing of the lab, quarantining and evacuating it. Dr. Brenner and other scientists investigate the area and find that the gate into the upside down is spreading into the lab and they still don't know where Eleven is. The missing Eleven wanders the woods and walks into Benny's burgers. She sneaks into the kitchen, eating some fries that were for the other guests, but as Benny, Hammond was returning from serving the customers, he sees her eating and runs in to catch her. But when he does he realizes not only is it a girl unlike he thought, but she also had a shaved head and looked pretty beaten up. He cooks her a burger and asks her a few questions, especially due to how quickly she was munching down the food. Benny goes and calls social services about it, thinking she's either abused or kidnapped or something as such. But someone else was listening to his call and got her exact location. The three boys use the device called the Heathkit Ham Shack. Mr. Clark tells them that it can communicate to other parts of the world such as Australia. While they're all having fun, they hear a knock at the door. Hopper interrupts as he grabs the other boys to talk to them about Will. They tell him he might have gone down Mirkwood. They ask to help look for Will with the police. But Hopper shuts them down instantly and says, for them to go home and don't go investigating on their own. Hopper and his team search the road they were talking about and down the road's hill they find Will's bike abandoned. They go to the buyer's home to show Joyce his bike they found and they begin investigating the house. Hopper goes and investigates their shed, turning the lights on and looking around. He sees the bullets packed open with a few spilling out of it. The lights break and he hears smiley movement coming from a covered spot in the shed. He alerts the others to go begin a search party. Jonathan and Joyce prepare missing persons posters and Jonathan blames himself for not being there for Will. Joyce tells him he's not to blame and for him not to do that to himself. They get a phone call and she hears only breathing and growling and until she's electrocuted by the phone. Later in the day Agent Connie Frazier arrives at Benny's. She acts as social services and shoots Benny dead. Eleven runs out and two guards come to stop her, but she kills them both as she runs wild into the woods. Mike, Dustin and Lucas go and search for Will in the woods on their own even after being told not to. They keep searching until they hear rustling in the woods and run into Eleven. They sneak Eleven into Mike's basement and after giving her some clothes for her to change into, Eleven shows him her 011 tattoo and reveals that's her name, Mike nicknaming her L. 
After searching for Will the entire night, the police and volunteers still have no clues. Hopper arrives and she tells him about the burnt phone. Joyce tells her that she heard breathing, and not just any breathing, but Will's breathing. Hopper decides to go to Lonnie's because they didn't hear from him. Jonathan tries to go, but Hopper tells him to stay put. They all continue their search throughout the day. Mike goes to check on Eleven and give her some food. He tries to get her to go to the front and talk to his mom so she can get proper help. But Eleven says she doesn't want his mom to get help. That she's in trouble with bad men who want to kill her and will kill him if found. His mom yells as he has to go to school. Jonathan hangs the missing posters at Hawkins High School. And after Steve and his friends give him a stare, Nancy goes over to him and apologizes for everything. Jonathan leaves the school and travels away from Hawkins to his father to hopefully find Will. Dustin and Lucas realize Mike isn't there at school today, hoping his plan didn't fail. Mike ends up sneaking home that day after his mom leaves so he can stay with Eleven. Eleven explores his house and eventually they get to Mike's room where she sees an image of Will. She seems concerned. Karen arrives home early and hears Mike. He puts Eleven into the closet before Karen finds her. Mike lies about feeling sick today, and Karen thinks he stayed home because of the things going on with Will, that she's not upset about it. After school Dustin and Lucas come over and are confused why Eleven's still there, and they all argue. Lucas suggests going to Mike's mom, but Mike tells him they might die if they do. But before Lucas can get out the room and tell Karen about her, Eleven uses her telekinetic powers to slam the door shut forcefully. Agents from Hawkins' lab heard the call told police about the burnt phone and go to the buyer's home covering as Hawkins' power and light, but with none of the buyer's home. They investigate the shed where they find material from the upside down. They know the Demogorgon is loose and might have taken Will. The police find Benny's dead in his diner and it's been staged to look like a suicide. Hopper goes and interviews one of Benny's friends. With the information he gives Hopper thinks that Benny's friend saw Will at Benny's. At night they get the police to look around Benny's, and Mr. Clark finds a piece of clothing in a tunnel that leads right into Hawkins' lab. But earlier in the day, and outside of Hawkins, Jonathan arrives at Lonnie's, and Lonnie doesn't knock where Will is either. Jonathan drives back home and searches the woods himself while taking photos. On the other side of the woods, Nancy and Barbara go to Steve's night party while his parents are away. While they all are having a fun time, Barb cuts her hand on a can by accident and she goes to Steven's bathroom. The rest party in the pool and scream having fun, which alerts Jonathan who runs over thinking something's wrong. After the pool Steve's friends go to Steve's mom's room. Nancy goes upstairs with Steve and on her way up tells Barb kindly to go home. Upstairs Steve gives Nancy clean clothes, and eventually they kiss and begin to have sex. Barb however goes to sit outside at the pool bleeding into the pool. Jonathan takes pictures of all these events, but while his camera reloads, Barb is taken into the upside down. Barb is chased by the monster in the upside down until she's caught and dragged into the pool. Back in Mike's basement, Eleven figures out which piece is Will's. She flips the Dungeons and Dragons board upside down and places the Demogorgon game piece on the board to demonstrate that he's hiding in the upside down and the Demogorgon is after him. They all plan to go and find the upside down as well as the Demogorgon. At night, Joyce's phone goes off and she hears breathing again. The lights begin flickering when he says, Mom. The phone electrocutes again, but the lights flicker at specific points in the house, creating a path to Will's room. Should I stay or should I go? Begins playing from Will's room. The lights flicker and then intensify, only for everything to turn off and for the Demogorgon to stretch out of the wallpaper. Joyce runs out of her house. Before driving away she hears the song come back on Oswell as the lights beginning to flicker more, so she gets out and begins to walk back inside. Chief Hopper and Officers Powell and Callahan investigate at Hawkins National Laboratory, looking through the other side of the pipe and discover that the employees are lying to them. The videotape they played to the police about that night as proof Will wasn't there had no rain whatsoever, but that night of the search there was rain. They go to the library where they discover the incident that happened with Terry Ives, but also that Dr. Brenner was involved in Project MKUltra. Hopper thinks the piece of clothing from the hospital gown belonged to Will and that they might have gotten Will a part of MKUltra. He might have seen something he shouldn't have and been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Joyce hangs Christmas lights all over her house. Karen and Holly come over to check up on Joyce. 
While Joyce and Karen are talking, Holly sees the lights flicker and follows them to Will's room, only to see something come out the walls. When Joyce picks her up and realizes she saw something in the walls, she kicks Karen out of her house. Nancy went home sometime last night and discovered that Barb is missing when she's not at school the next day. Nancy has been looking for Barb all day, and when she goes to find Steve she sees them picking on Jonathan. Jonathan is revealed to have taken pictures of the party and specifically Nancy. Steve grabs his photos and rips them up, and then he breaks his camera right in front of him. Nancy sees the photos of Barb and grabs more of the photo pieces planning to put them back together just in case. During school she goes to Steve's house to find Barb. She finds her car still there empty. She goes into the woods to search for her, but is scared away from a strange noise and a figure running around. She goes straight home and tells her mom something bad might have happened to Barb. Eleven meets the boys outside his house at 3.15 like they planned. They walk in the woods and end up at Will's house. Eleven claims that he's hiding there. They see a bunch of officers and ambulances heading down the road, so they get back on their bikes and follow them all the way to the quarry. A body, claimed to be Will Byers, is found there. The boys, Eleven and Hopper all watch this unfold in front of their eyes. Mike gets super annoyed at Eleven, thinking that she's lied to them all about Will being alive. Annoyed, Mike rides off all the way home to hug his mum. Will tells Joyce using lights that he's alive, but not safe. Knowing that he can communicate with the lights, she begins to write the alphabet on the wall so he can use it to say full words. He tells her through the lights that he's right here. When she asks what to do, he tells her to run. When she realizes what the message is, the Demogorgon breaks through the wallpaper again, this time fully, she sees it and runs out the house. She runs into Jonathan and they exchange a hug while the police are coming down the road to tell her the news. The police look around the house after Joyce tells them about the monster in the walls. She claims that the body is not Will's. She tells them about the Demogorgon she saw, the animal that looked human but without a face. After the police leave, she goes to the shed and grabs an axe, sitting on the couch, awaiting its return. She falls asleep until Jonathan wakes her up early the next morning to go confirm it's Will's body. There Hopper learns Gary didn't do the autopsy, which he usually does, that someone from state did. Joyce and Jonathan see the body, but she leaves not believing it is really Will. After a small argument about her lying to him, Eleven proves to Mike that Will is alive as she makes contact with him through the walkie-talkie with her powers. Hearing him singing his comfort song, Mike asks to stay home for the day and after getting the boys to come over. And after a slight argument, they know they need a stronger signal to reach Will again as it keeps cutting out every known and then. So they give Eleven a full-on makeover, which Mike compliments, and go to school to make contact through the AV Club's super radio. They get confronted by Mr. Clark and they lie to him about Eleven and why they want to use the radio, and they're successfully given the keys by Mr. Clark. Out of respect they go and attend the assembly for Will. Nancy tells the police about everything like the party, thinking that the figure she saw took Barb. They basically create a story that might explain where she's gone, that may be out of jealousy of her and Steve she ran away. After Nancy and Karen go home and have a small argument, in her room Nancy constructs the picture she took from Jonathan of Barb, and after piecing it together she recognizes the figure slightly. She goes to see Jonathan, who's currently looking at coffins for the funeral, and she asks about the image and what it could be. She makes Jonathan remember and realize that the faceless figure is what his mom has been talking about the whole time. They go to the school's darkroom to help make the image clearer and find out that it truly is the faceless monster. Shepard, a worker at Hawkins' lab, enters the upside down through the gate to see what's really through there on the other side while being attached to a security line. But while inside he talks about how everything is still there, but all rotten and different. They attempt to reel him back in, but he is taken by the Demogorgon as his security line comes back with blood all over it. After the assembly ends Mike confronts the bullies about disrespectfully laughing during it. They bully Mike about it all, which causes him to get sent over the edge and go and push Troy over. Troy gets up to fight Mike, but is stopped midway. Eleven makes Troy pee himself to help Mike out. After running away, they go inside the AV club. 
Eleven uses her powers to find wherever Will is. At the buyers, Joyce hears someone banging on the wall and hears Will screaming for her. Joyce breaks down the wallpaper and sees him through an opening, an opening to the upside down. He keeps screaming, describing home but dark and cold. Eventually, the opening begins to close and luckily the boys heard all of Will's side of the conversation, until eventually, the machine sparks a fuse. Back at the buyers, Joyce breaks down the wall to see if anything's there, only for there to be nothing. Hopper talks with Gary and discovers that a lot of troopers followed the autopsy and were with the body, claiming jurisdiction, kicking him out. So he goes to talk to the state trooper David O'Bannon, who found Will's body. Hopper figures out that he's lying and after David leaves because Hopper's getting too close. Hopper finishes his drink and goes to beat up David out back. Hopper learns that the people who told David to find the body there also told David to make sure no one else gets too close to the body. So Hopper goes to observe the body itself. He tells the lady at front that he forgot his hat. And Hopper punches the guard out cold that was standing in front of Will's body's room. After getting the keys he enters and finds the body. After touching it he realizes the body feels weird. He grabs a knife out his pocket and after a few moments cuts it slightly open, revealing that it's a fake body, stuffed with cotton like a plush. This is not Will's real body. He immediately goes and breaks into the lab and enters the restricted area he saw earlier. After being confronted, overpowering the two guards and stealing their access card, he keeps going forward and sees Eleven's old room as well as the gate itself. He stares in awe as well as fear, only to be put to sleep by the scientists. Will's funeral is held and everyone attends including Will's father Lonnie who returns to Hawkins, as well as other people who cared for Will. After the funeral Jonathan and Nancy meet and prepare to find the Demogorgon and possibly kill it if they do. The boys try and talk to Mr. Clark about dimensions, and how they could possibly travel there, using the Veil of Shadows as an analogy. As last night, they remembered the Upside Down and how maybe Will was where Eleven was, but on the other side. He gives them an example of a fleer and an acrobat, saying that in order to travel there, it would require a massive amount of energy that would need to tear a hole in time and space, and that if there was already a gate, it would disrupt the magnetic field. Hopper wakes up in the morning remembering all that happened last night. He knows he must have been drugged and they somehow know where he lives. And he finds a bug in his place. As in his lab Dr. Brenner learns that Eleven was in the AV club helping the boys locate Will. As Dr. Brenner knows they can't hear Will's voice any other way. It was definitely Eleven. He sends the same actor from before over to the school to inspect and repair the device L broke, confirming their suspicion. Back at the buyers, Joyce and Lonnie argue as it turns out Lonnie was only here for the money he could get through a business and so she rightfully kicks him out. Hopper learns that Barb's car was found by the same people from the state doing their job for them again, and also that other kids went missing near Mirkwood. He goes to team up with Joyce, and after he finds the chip in her house, he admits to her that she was right about Will from the beginning, the whole time. This whole time.